Hello everybody and welcome, my name is Marco and I'm Mr. Good Riddance. This is the first video of the second week of tutorials that I will be posting on this channel to show you how to do different techniques. This week's technique is strainer pores and now without any further ado, let's do this! Alright, so today's tutorial will be about how to do strainer pours. For this pour I am using a big stainless steel strainer or colander. It has a flat bottom, so we'll see how this affects the pour later on in the video. I will be going through all the color spectrum of my paint, trying to keep it as centered as possible. As you will see, if the paint starts moving in one direction, I will adjust where I add the paint. So if, for example, if the center is moving to the bottom right corner, I'll start adding the next color in the top left part of the circle and the center will readjust. You will also see me adding some paint to a glass next to the canvas. That's because I bought this paint from a brand I never tried before and it had some lumpy paint in some bottles, which ended up ruining a few artworks. So a big tip I want to give you is always shake well pre-mixed bottles and double check that they aren't spoiled before adding them to a painting. So as you can see, once I added all the color spectrum, I started again, but this time I will add less paint. This will create some kind of circle within the circle effect, uh, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Another important thing to mention is that the paint I'm using is quite liquid, which is vital to make sure that it filters through the strainer rather than piling on top of it. So here I'm gonna raise the strainer, this is the most important part, I want to do this very slowly until I see that the paint has filtered through the holes, but at the same time I don't want to hold it above the painting for too long or I'll risk that some drops fall from the bottom of the strainer onto the painting. As I mentioned, the bottom of this strainer is flat, so if I just suddenly lift it, a lot of paint will remain on top of it and only a color will remain at the center of your painting, the last one that managed to filter through. So now I'm adding some black paint to help the centerpiece move around, but I made a mistake. I should have spread the paint around evenly. This is one of the first strainer paintings I did back in April, so I didn't quite know. So now what I'm gonna do, because the rotating platform didn't really do its job, I will, rather than rotating the painting again, simply tilt the canvas from one side to the other. and now I'm simply using my fingers to help the paint run towards the corner. As you can see, I'm always tilting the canvas from one side to the opposite side. This is to try and maintain the initial shape as much as possible. Now, tilt back to the center, so always to the edge, and then back to the center, then to the opposite edge, and then back to the center, and there it is. So, as you can see, all the lines from the strainer stayed there. There are some cells that expanded and became bigger, like the blue and the white one that you can see right there. And so, there it is, tried and cured. This is one of my favorite strainer pores I've done so far. I really like how the lines blend from a color to the next, and I think the detached center effect is really cool. So let me know what you think, remember that the key here is to use very liquid paint and calmly lifting the strainer without rushing that very vital moment. So I hope you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful please feel free to leave a comment below, if you have any questions feel free to reach out and please do consider subscribing if you are finding these videos useful. Thank you so very much, see you next time.